Praise the Lord from Pastor Strader at Lighthouse Church. Thanks for connecting with us through our podcast. Our prayer is that it's a blessing to you as we try to reach, equip, and mobilize Jesus' name disciples in Apache Junction, Arizona, and the surrounding region. Enjoy today's podcast and come back often. God bless you. We love you. Praise God, praise God, praise God. If you have your Bibles and will turn with me to the book of Matthew, our children are being dismissed, but if you would get your Bibles and just let's go into the Word of the Lord. I don't know how your week has been. Maybe it's been a good week. Maybe it's been a so-so week. Maybe it's been a bad week. But no matter what kind of week I've had or you've had, God is still good. Amen. And that's kind of what I feel here in this place is God is still good and he's good all the time. Praise God. Matthew 27, and I will say that we are going to be having that marriage um, seminar on Saturday, Saturday, April 6th. And um, it's only going to be a couple of, well, I think three sessions. It It won't be an all day event. So we'll have to move quickly in what we cover. But I do believe it will enrich your, your soul and enrich, enrich your marriages and, and, uh, because God's going to help us. And um, sometimes when, whenever they ask me, at least I don't know how my wife felt, but you know, it's almost like the blind leading the blind a little bit. <laughs> but uh, I do forget that we've been married oh, uh, over 16 years. And in June, it'll be 16 years. And uh, God's been go- so great to us. And, uh, and I, I give great tribute to God for that. Amen. And then secondly, for my wife, for dealing with me for 16 years. Amen. She was, and I've had to deal with her for 16 years. Uh, but, uh, but we were looking at a picture, and, man, I, I was standing here it was a long time ago, and she sent it to me. She said, well, there's the black-haired David. And I was like, sorry. <laughs> that day was long gone. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Well, let's move on. I don't, I'm getting depressed. Amen. Matthew 27 and 22. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then? Everybody say, What shall I do with Jesus? What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. Amen. Just a little while before, as he was coming into the city, they were had palm leaves, and they were welcoming him, and man, kind of singing his praises, but then, not too long after that, they were shouting and crying out, as Pilate would ask, what shall I do with Jesus? And they said unto him, let him be crucified. Man, I want to also draw your attention to Acts 2 and verse 38. This is important that we take time to read the Word of God and set up what I believe God wants us to dive into. Then Peter said unto them, this is one but not the only scripture that tells us how to be saved. What shall you do? Peter said unto them, repent. Everybody say repent. And be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why we baptize. This is one of the reasons, this scripture and so many others, that we baptize in the only saving name. And that is the name of Jesus. For the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen, amen. I want to talk about this. I want to ask a question this morning. What will you do with Jesus? Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. What will you do with Jesus? Uh, Pilate, the governor of Judea, addresses a gathering crowd. and He poses a, an important question that explores not only what the crowd thinks about Jesus, but what they want done with him. We read it already, but I'm going to read it again. Pilate asked them, what should I do 
then with Jesus who is called Christ. What shall I do with Jesus? They were given an opportunity to influence what Pilate would do with him. They were given the opportunity to save him or to send him to the cross. Man, the crowd, the crowd cried out for Jesus to be crucified. To them, he was an offender of the law who must be done away with immediately. And others were also present as Jesus was portrayed, arrested, crucified, and then resurrected three days later. What did they, in essence, do with Jesus? The leading religious leaders had him captured and killed in Matthew 26 and 3. You can turn my, if you would, turn these up just a tad more, sister. Judas Iscariot betrayed him in Matthew 26, 14. The soldiers in attendance mocked him in Matthew 27 and 27. Bystanders misunderstood him when he tried to speak from the cross in Matthew 27 and 47. However, not all reacted to him adversely the Bible says in Luke 23 and also in Luke 24 that some women brought spices and perfume to the grave and were the first to announce the news that Christ had risen from the dead. And the centurion who witnessed the death of Jesus, which included the certain of the sanctuary tearing in two from top to bottom and twain, the earth quaking, rocks splitting, and the tombs of many saints opening, bringing them back to life. That's the power of God. Had perhaps the most accurate view of Jesus and this centurion cried out in Matthew 27 and 54, truly this was the Son of God. Surely this was the Son of God. Isn't it amazing that people can come to such different conclusions in their thinking about one individual? Isn't it interesting to you, it is to me, that 50, 60, 80, 100 people can be in a room and half of the people is, man, they're feeling the power of God and they're responding to that call. And the other half feel the power of God, yet they sit idly in their chair doing absolutely nothing or very minimal of what they should be doing. It is all about how we respond to Jesus. It's amazing to me how we can be in a service like we were in just a few moments ago of praise and worship, a time of worship and praise, and, and there would be a, a large majority that would respond and lift up hands and begin to uh, pray and begin, some are crying, some are shouting, some dancing, some jumping, some kneeling and praying, but then there are others who are unmoved. It's amazing to me how someone could come into the very presence of God where the glory of God is being poured out and be unmoved. It's amazing to me. It, it's amazing to me. And I realize all of the factors that are at play, there are some that are just not ready to make that step yet. Yet I still see some that are not ready to make that step. They're still moved by the Holy Ghost. They still feel the presence of God. And so they must respond in praise. They must respond in worship. But then there are others who just cross their arms, if you will. They, are, they, they, they come and they leave. And there really is no change. There really is no uh, uh, direction in their lives, spiritually speaking. And they kind of come and they attend the church, but they don't really participate. It blows me away that someone could sit in the very presence of God. It blows me away that people could sit in pre-service prayer and not pray when there are others seeking God. It blows my mind to think that there can be a mighty move of God and people at the altar, they're at their seats because the altar's filled up and, and they're, out, they're, they're, they're laying in the aisle, they're doing whatever they can and yet they just kind of stare and look, looking confused. It blows my mind because there are two different kinds of people. 
And it all boils down to what they are doing with Jesus. It's an interesting, as interesting as it is to ponder the varied responses, the most important question for you and I today is what will you and I do with Jesus? I want to just talk about the Holy Ghost for a moment. And I'm not trying to preach to get any applause or amen. I realize it's Sunday morning and, and we don't typically do that. But I've come to talk about the Holy Ghost for a moment because we have something on the inside of us. We have something on the inside of us that is from another world. It is not of this world. You say, I don't understand the Holy Ghost. I don't fully understand the Holy Ghost because it is not of this world. It is beyond comprehension. It is beyond human understanding. His, his ways are far beyond my ways. His, his thoughts are far beyond my thoughts. I... I, I I truly don't understand this, the power that I feel as I preach here today. I can't put it, I'm not eloquent enough in my words to be able to explain to you the power and the surging of the Holy Ghost that I feel. But all I can tell you, it's on the inside. And, and something is trying to get out on the outside. And what it is, is it's the Spirit of God that's from another world. And he says, I'm going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to fill you with my spirit. And I'm going to fill you with my spirit, not so that you can sit idly by. But I'm asking you to take the Holy Ghost and do something. Do something with it. Do something with it. What are you going to do? with this Holy Ghost that you have inside of you. Maybe you don't have the Holy Ghost yet. What are you going to do with Jesus? What are you going to do with truth? If the Bible says that you must repent and you must be baptized in Jesus' name and that you will then be filled and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, I come to ask you, what will you do with Jesus? Bible says in Ephesians 3 20 now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power everybody say power say it like you mean it power according to the power that worketh in us it's not by my might it's not by my power, but it's by the Spirit that is on the inside of me. I by myself don't have any power or any authority to do anything. But when God fills you with the Holy Ghost, you've got something on the inside of you that is more powerful, more able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all I want you to think about the grandest, most powerful thing you've ever seen. God's able to do even more than that. Who's, anybody ever here? I know there's a couple. You've seen somebody raised from the dead before? So God's healed somebody raised them from the dead? There's been a few. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. I want you to think about the greatest revival that you can quander up in your brain about what God would do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. I want you to think about what, what, what if your life was just perfect and it was right and, man, everything was in order and you, you say, man, I would love if that was, that was it. God's saying, I can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. All, not by your power, not by the power of some doctor that's practicing, but by the Spirit of God, by the power of the Holy Ghost that lives on the inside of you. 
something is living. You've got the Holy Ghost. Something is living on the inside of you, inside of your body that is from another dimension. It's from a place where we cannot see clearly. That's why Paul said we see through a glass darkly. We are praying. We seek after God. We try, to, we try to discern the spirits, but we truly can't see the way that God sees it. We're striving to see it the way God sees it. We're, well, that's why you pray and that's why you fast. That's why you seek after the things of God because you're trying to get a view that is not of this world. You're trying to get a view of the spirit world. You see, we're, we, the reality that we see is only an imperfect reflection of the spirit world. We see a hazy view of this spiritual reality. And the thing about Jesus is that he is so gentle. He is so kind. He is so cool and smooth. He is such a gentleman that he can live on the inside of somebody and that person go a week, heaven for a day, heaven forbid a week. My God, I hope not longer than that. But the Holy Ghost can live on the inside of them and they ignore it and they not use it and they not use the power that lives inside of them. You see, so often we get so busy, we get so involved in our life, all we can see is the physical. But what God wants to do is take us to another dimension where we can see what is happening in the Spirit, and it only comes through a relationship with God. And a relationship with God only comes through prayer and communion with God. You want to see beyond the dynamics of this world? You see, we see the politics. We see the, all the things that's going on. We see all the sickness. We see the headlines of they're going to burn this. And we see the headlines of, of this eclipse and, and all the things. And who and the ah, and all it is is fear. I'm, uh, trying to stir up fear in us. Uh, but God is calling a people. He's gift. Do you realize the power that lives on the inside of you? We are not of this world, but we are filled with the power of the, I got some people don't believe it today, and I, that's okay, but I got a few that are filled with the Holy Ghost. What are you going to do with Jesus? What are you going to do with him? You know, oftentimes we ask this question, God, what are you going to do with me? Anybody ever ask that? I've asked, i got some people not even, anybody ever asked, God, what are you going to do with me? What are you going to do through me? God, what are you doing here? What, what are you doing in this situation? It's a fair question, but let me ask you the better question. What are you going to do with him? Stop asking God, what are you going to do with me? And start asking God, what am I doing with you? God's saying, I filled you with, the, I've given you, the greatest power that, is, that ever has existed, what are you going to do with it? He said, you will receive power after the Holy Ghost has fell upon you. So when you are filled with the Holy Ghost and you speak in another language, which is the initial evidence of the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you, he said, now that I filled you, you shall receive power to be witnesses. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do with it? What are you doing with the Holy Ghost? Well, I'm telling you, I feel convicted when I start talking like that. Because I, I look back at my last week. I look back at my last month. I look back, back, back at my past few years, and I'm thinking, dear Lord, I could have surely done more with my Holy Ghost than what I have done with it. Surely there's been some people that I could have had a little bit more faith and believed for a healing or for a miracle or for resurrection of their souls. I've come to ask the church today, what are you doing with the greatest power, the greatest gift? It's the Holy Ghost. You see, that's the, that's the greatest tragedy is that he just becomes a part of your body and you can go through a day, you can go through a week, without realizing that the power is living inside of you. 
That's why we have people coming to churches, sitting on our pews, sitting on our chairs. They have the power of God living on the inside of them, and they're absolutely doing nothing for the kingdom of God. They're just trying to survive through this trauma, this pain, this issue. They're just trying to survive. And God's saying, dear Lord, I've given you the power to tread on serpents. I've given you the power to win the lost. I've given you the authority through the power of the Holy Ghost to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. He said, greater things will you do. Greater things. Think about all the things that God did. I mean, he did some awesome things. He said, greater things will you do because you've got the power of God inside of you. 1 Corinthians 3, 16, know you not that you're... You are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. He's asking a question. Do you not understand that I live on the inside of you? So the next time that you have a little bit of doubt or fear or that apathetic spirit comes upon you, you, you really need to read that scripture and you need to start asking the question, what am I doing with God? The next time you feel like, you know what, I, I really haven't, I haven't witnessed in a while, you need to ask yourself, what am I doing with Jesus? What am I doing with the gift of God? Well, you see the leadership, they're going to do, they're going to they're take care of it, they're going to do it. We call an outreach event and only about 10 or 15 show up. What are you doing with Jesus? I'm, I'm just asking it. I'm trying to be polite and kind, but very direct. What are you doing? What are you doing about it? We come to services, the power of God's moving, the altar preaching's been put forth, the, the altar call has been made. What are you going to do with it? You see, now it's in your hands. It's out of the hands of a preacher. It's out of the hands of a church. And now it is in your hand. Everybody hold it out. It's in your hands. You, what are you going to do with them? What are you going to do with it? Are you going to squander away the Spirit of God that He's given you and, and be some carnal, some 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 double minded man that say you're righteous that says you're a Christian that says you're an apostolic but you have nothing you have nothing that resembles a, a Christian or apostolic in your daily life uh, you, because you are squandering away the spirit, the power the authority of God it is a shame and a disgrace but there are some people that know what it is on the inside of them Would you lift your hands right now and cry out to the Lord? What are you going to do with Jesus? Praise God, praise God. I don't know, sister, uh, sisters, if you can play that video again, but just no audio. I just want you to put it on loop. No audio, just put it on. I'm going to tell you, as I watched these baptisms and I looked, Brother Al, at the faces of these people, I thought, dear God, I don't never want to lose that in my own spirit. I never want to lose that in my own attitude, in my own approach to God, because the way that they come out of that water, look at Emmy's face when she comes out of the water. You can see and you can feel the power of God. Oh, come on, look at it. I never want to miss what God has done in my life. He's filled you with the Holy Ghost. What are you going to do about it? Are you just going to sit idly by and let souls be lost? I pray that God, I pray this way all the time. I pray God would shake this church, every saint of God that is in this church, and that God would shake us until we have such a burden for the loss of this city that we cannot sleep, that we cannot rest, that we cannot eat until we see the dimension of the power of God that he desires for us to see. Would you lift your hands and your voices right now? Let's pray unto God. We have the Creator on the inside of us. Once you repent of your sins, you're baptized in his name for the remission of those sins and you're filled with the Holy Ghost. You have the creator on the inside of you. He is the one that created the world 
It's the one that formed the seas. He's the one that separated the light from the darkness. He lives inside of you. He's the one that rose the dead. He's the one that opened blinded eyes. He's the one that sped in the ground and formed an eye and made an eye. That's the kind of God. That's the God that lives on the inside of you. That's the God that's trying to reach for you. He's saying, will you go? Will you not go and make disciples? Will you not go and lay hands on the sick and see them recover? Will you not go? I've given you the power of God and yet we sit on our seat like we're unmoved and unchained. He died for us. He went to a cross called Calvary and all we can do is sit on a seat. I plead the blood of God over your soul. I said, I plead the blood of God over you because you are squandering the very thing that died for you. He died for you. He died. And you have the truth inside of you. You know what to do. You know right from wrong. You've got the word of God in front of you. Yet you refuse to open it up and see what it has to say. What are you doing with Jesus? Your Bible's so dusted, it would fill a room if it was being opened up. What are you doing with Jesus? Your prayer room. Your prayer room has been so unvisited. Your relationship with God has been so squandered that you are squandering away the very thing that he died for. But God is calling somebody, awake. 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 Awaken. Awaken out of your sleep. Awaken out of your slumber. I've given you power to tread on serpents. I've given you power. Oh, let's lift our hands right now. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. What are you going to do with Jesus? What are you going to do with him? Let me remind you, it is not fantasy. The power of God that surges through this place and that is surging through the hearts of people that you stand among today. It is not fantasy. It is not some... A fictitious thing that we're preaching about. Everything I'm talking about can be found in the Word of God. It's not imaginary, but it is mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. I tell you what, church, we need to get, and I'm, I mean no disrespect, I'm preaching to me first. We need to get such a Holy Ghost backbone in us. Somebody needs to hear me today. You're about to face some things because you're trying, to ele- you're trying to go deeper into the things of God. But let me tell you, it only comes through spiritual warfare. That's exactly how it comes. And let me tell you, it can be taxing on your spirit and it will be taxing on your flesh. But you've got to get away with God. And great is He that is in in, in, in me. It's not just on the outside. It's not just on the pastor. It's not just on Brother Wasman. It's not just on the preachers. But it's in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We need a spiritual backbone in us. I believe God wants us to walk in such authority in the Holy Ghost. Not that it's pompous, not that it's uh, so super righteous that you can't reach out to anybody, but I'm talking about a Holy Ghost boldness that when we walk into a hospital room, there is a boldness of the Holy Ghost. There's an array of the Holy... There needs to be a boldness. Well, that's just for the preachers. That... That, that's just for the people on the, no, oh, no, no. He said, you shall receive power. That means every single one of you. It's not just the credentialed. It's, 
you shall receive power. What will you do with Jesus? I've referred to it probably 15,000 times now, but I'm going to read it because you've got to see it in the Word, Acts 1 and 8. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and to Samaria. Oh, but wasn't that just for them in the Bible? No. And unto the uttermost part of the earth. I want you to go to the next verse real quick. I don't have this in my notes, but at 49, and behold, I send the, pro- the next verse, yeah. And behold, I send the promise of my Father. Luke 24 and 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry, everybody say tarry. Ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Let me just... Let me just set the, the, the context. of You can be seated. This is, this is what the context of this scripture is. He says, I want you to go to Jerusalem, and I want you to wait for the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says they would go into an upper room, and they would pray until they, until they would tarry until. There's, there's merit for tarrying. There's merit for resting and, and just sitting in the prayer. And, and, but he said, I want you to... I want you to go there and tarry or, or be there until you be endued with power from an eye. But you can read it in Acts 2 and 2 and uh, Acts 1 and 2 where they were in the upper room and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. But friend, they didn't stay in the upper room. They didn't stay there. He said, I want you to stay there until you're filled with the power. But after you're filled with the power, you've got to get out of the upper room and you need to get into the highways and the byways and compel them to come in. Luke 14 and 23, the Lord said unto the servant, Go, 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 go into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. We need such an urgency in our spirit, that urgency and that burden that I'm preaching about today. It'll put away all your petty pride. It'll put away all your petty disagreements with your brother and your sister when you start thinking about a soul that is lost and going to devil's hell. You'll stop worrying about how they talk to you. You'll stop worrying about what they said about you. You'll stop worrying about all these petty things of life and you'll get down to an altar because I got power and I got to travail before God. Hey, you hear me today? I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for those people. There, there are some that are here that were, that were baptized in Jesus' name and the four that were filled with the Holy Ghost. But Lighthouse Church, let's wake up. That is only the beginning of what God wants to do. Not only does he want to do that every week, but you think six is incredible, exceeding, abundantly, above all. He wants to bring people out of hospitals and put them in a baptismal tank and be baptized in Jesus' name. You got it. You got it. You got it. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do? If the pastor would just come, if the pastor would just pray, if the pastor's wife would just do this, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do to reach the lost? I wish the church would do that. I wish the church would do this. I, I wish we'd stop doing that. I wish we'd stop doing this. I wish you would change your questioning and say, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing with the greatest gift that ever has existed? Mark 16 and 15. And he said unto them, Go, everybody say, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, he that believeth and is baptized. Belief is not enough. 
Believing is the first step. Well, trust me, we got to believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But he said, be ba- those that are baptized and, or that believes and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. But after you got the Holy Ghost, it says these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they will cast out devils and they shall speak with new tongues. Verse 18, they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall, lay, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover what are you doing with Jesus Brother Wasman as you come Matthew 25 he says his Lord answered and he said unto them thou wicked and slothful servant Thou wicked and slothful servant. Oh, you can still be a servant and be considered wicked and slothful in God's eyes. What does that mean? That means you can be holy, sanctified, righteous, all the words you want to use and still be wicked. And still be slothful. He called him a servant. Well, I'm a servant of the almighty God. I, 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 I believe truth. I, I listen to truth. I sing truth. The Bible says, don't just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word as well. You listen really well with your ears, but your heart is not in tune with what it is you are hearing. Well, I listen to preaching five hours a week, six hours a week. I, it's almost like Paul. I speak in tongues more than you all. What was he saying? He was saying, it's not just about speaking in tongues. What are you doing with the Holy Ghost that is on the inside of you? Oh, oh, let me tell you, this is shaking me up just as much as I pray it's shaking you up because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I've not walked in the boldness and the authority like I should have in times past, but I pray to God, God would shake me and he would stir my spirit so that everywhere I walk, I walk in the authority of the Holy Ghost. When I step into Fry's Marketplace, I'm walking in there with the boldness and the authority of the Holy Ghost. When I everywhere I go, I want to walk in the authority and the boldness of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because it lives on the inside of me. Let's all stand right now. I want us to lift our hands and begin to pray. God wants to fill somebody with the power again. He wants to fill you with the greatest power. And he's asking this church, he's asking somebody right now, what are you going to do with me? Quit asking what I'm going to do with you and start asking God, what am I going to do with you? What store am I going to take you in today? What restaurant am I going to take you in today and introduce somebody to Jesus? What soul... Are you going to allow me to reach? Oh, come on, would you lift up your voice right now and begin to pray and begin to seek his face? What are you going to do with Jesus? What are you going to do with Jesus? Come on, somebody needs to break off that Judas Iscariot spirit. You need to shake it off into the fire right now. That spirit that is squandering away what you have been given, what God has died for. Come on, I don't just worship a cross because it is not, he is not hanging on the cross anymore. But I worship a King of Kings and a Lord of Lords. He is alive forevermore. He has all power and authority in his hands. And he has come to fill you with his spirit and the power that comes with it. Oh, I don't fear sickness and disease. I don't fear circumstances and trouble because I'm filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Over 
have your life. 